We begin today with Nickelodeon perpetuating Irish stereotypes. Blame them, not me. Otis. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. No, not, not that Otis. Otis the cow is passing out green top hats and listing his favorite Irish cliches. And the chicken whose name is Peck, which also feels derogatory to chickens. Peck remarks how he never knew Otis was such a fan of Irish culture. Otis lets it be known that he's willing to exploit any culture whose cash is copious. It's St. Patrick's Day and the farmer makes buku banknotes selling tubers to the town folks at the spud fair. He's sitting sideways in a split on top of this selenum tuberosum and the pervs in the crowd are losing their mind. I'm not sure if he's selling potatoes or ass at this point. Otis is confident that everyone is gonna go crazy after they get a whiff of his artificial odor enhancers. Otis's last name just might be Monsanto. He calls it O de Spud, which translates to water of potato. Thank God I took that French class in ninth grade. He even has a nice propaganda commercial filmed. Everyone is pretty stoked because scamming always prospers. At this point, nothing could go wrong. Right at that moment, this uh, cat, mongoose, wallaroo? This creature of ill repute runs in screaming, the potato crop is gone! They're all worried about their impending broke acidness if they can't sell that crop, and Peck is worried that the farmer is just gonna sell their ass to some type of thrift store for animals called Animals for Less. I can only imagine that that is the old glue and beak and wallaroo factory, if you know what I'm saying. Pig, which has to be offensive to pigs, like bruh can't even get a name. Let's call him Phil. Phil proposes that the crop disappearing could only mean one thing, leprechauns. Everyone writes that off as a stupid ass idea and just laughs in his face. The rat that's voiced by Sheen from Jimmy Neutron tells his dumbass that leprechauns aren't real. To prove it, he pulls out his security camera, but he forgets to close his private browser first. The farm has this 4K ass security camera that captures this evil leprechaun using his powers of tater transmutation to finesse the farm of their food. It's settled. They're gonna catch Lucky the Leprechaun and rob him for all the hearts, stars, horseshoes, and tasty red balloons he got in his pantaloons. They're out strolling through a window screensaver looking for Lucky by just screaming for him. Abby, the tan cow, military presses a rock like Goldberg, and they find the little bastard hiding. Seamus is knickers. Whoa, he said what? Knickers. I'm sorry, never mind. I clearly wasn't paying attention. As they say, irregardless, allow me to address the elephant in the room. Or should I say the big burly ass cow in the room? Is Otis a woman? Why does he have udders and look exactly like a dairy cow? I'm going to just subtly fade away from that subject and back to talking about these strong back legged ass animals attempting to jump this leprechaun. Lucky ain't feeling that, so he threatens them with a whimsical magical wrath. Nobody even knew leprechauns got down like that, but they would have if they had attended Dr. Phillips' lecture on leprechauns. Otis has stuffed her fupa in this corduroy diaper with the plan of selling shillelaghs to the leprechaun and just knocking his ass out when he's distracted. Otis attempts her worst Irish accent and the leprechaun uses that as an opportunity to use his dark Dublin magic to possess the mind of Abby and get her to hit Otis with the wop wop loo wop wop bamboo. The mongoose and the chicken run up so Lucky turns them into a sack of Reggie. Otis has another plan bend the lines of Ginger once again by trying to make Phil sexy so he can seduce the leprechaun. Lucky overhears that and plants a glue trap for these idiots like it's a game of balloons. While the gang of goofies are glued down, Lucky uses this as an opportunity to try to spatchcock Philip's rump roast, if you know what I'm saying. Phil rejects his advances and pulls off his wig, but Lucky ain't feeling that, so he turns Phil's head into a fleshlight? Can I show this? Otis is distraught at the fact that all his friends turn into a lonely but entertaining Friday night and he yells out in disgust. Sheen makes sure to remind him that it is in fact all his fault. The chicken and the Tasmanian devil over there are watering each other and the only thing that's been planted are these weird ass early 2000s anthropomorphized animals now turning into pure unfiltered nightmare fuel in the back of my brain. Now I know why everyone that was a kid when shows like this were on are all so messed up now. Well, this isn't a therapy session so I should probably get back to the barnyard. They have a plan, find the end of the rainbow and have Lucky run his jewels. A great plan, but how are they gonna find a rainbow? Phil tells them all they have to do is close their eyes, 
wished very hard and filled their hearts with love. That don't work at all because he forgot they also need a rain cloud with sulfur iodide so their love is meaningless. Runtime must have been running short because they have Otis say she has a date with adventure. They show her landing a plane which how the hell can an animal with hooves fly a plane but whatever. Then they just know where the rainbow is. Slightly anticlimactic but this story gotta keep rolling somehow. Lucky is over here sticking to his roots. <clears throat> root vegetables that is he notices a rainbow over yonder and uses his powers of pure evil to propel him towards the perpetrators ready to pop their psyche into a puddle the notable female otis has stolen lucky's cauldron of gold so lucky attempts to put a hole in his chest like a train luckily for otis she is protected by a force field conjured from equally evil but just as nonsensical nickelodeon magic this is all explained thoroughly by professor phil here lucky is turning into pookie over this gold and he's willing to do anything i can't even be mad at him because this is some serious dough in gold. I'm no mathematician, but according to my calculations, that cauldron is large. Therefore, it would have to be worth a lot. If I'm Otis, I wouldn't even offer that back, but I think he might be the only one with a force field, so Lucky would probably put his friends on a t-shirt if he didn't. Lucky uses his magic to turn everything back to normal, and it looks like everything worked out nicely. And what did we learn today? Leprechauns are bitter, spiteful little homunculi that are best left alone.